So that's closures and memory cycles. I'm going to do a demo on this, okay, which is I'm going to do that red square root. And let's see what this looks like in the calculator to do this. All right, so I'm going back to our calculator. That's that. There we go. Okay, so here's our calculator as we left it off. This is not your homework calculator. This is lecture four or whatever our last time. We just have this uh, uh, blank calculator right here. I'm going to, now that you're comfortable with things like navigation controllers, I'm going to actually add another view controller here, okay? And I'm going to put a button in it. Oops, make this bigger. Put a button in this. I'm going to make it bigger. We'll make it uh, 40 point, let's say. Okay, I'm going to change the title to be calculate. Okay, and this button is going to cause this calculator here to appear. So let's go ahead and reset to suggested constraints. Notice when I did that, oh look, I got all kinds of constraints I didn't really want. You see, because that's because I didn't have this thing being its natural size. So let's go over to the size inspector over here and look at our constraints. And we see, oh, it's constraining the width to be 204. I don't want that. I want it to be its natural width. So I'm just going to select this constraint, constraint and hit delete. Same thing here. It's constraining it to the top by some magic number 203. I don't want that because I want it to be aligned center x and y. So it's OK in here just to go and delete constraints you don't work, want. Now, of course, now this is yellow. So we're going to go down here and say, click on this, sorry, and go down here and say, update frames. And that's going to move the frames to wherever they should be. And now everything is good. OK, a little quick review there of constraints. Um, also, I don't want the entry point to be my calculator. I want it to be this thing. OK, this is going to be my first thing. And I'm going to put it inside of a navigation controller. So I'm going to put this inside a navigation controller with embed in. Oops, can't select this again. Embed in navigation controller. And now I have a nice little UI here that has a navigation controller in this. And I'm going to make it so that this button, when it's clicked, segues to show a calculator. Okay, so let's do that. Control drag over here. We're going to do a show because we're inside a navigation controller. Not, this is not for iPad. This is iPhone only. So I'm just going to do show. And here's our show. Now, I'm not going to set an identifier here because I'm not going to prepare that calculator. I'm just going to let it come up in whatever its state is. I'm not going to prepare it. So no need to put an identifier here. Okay, so this is what our UI looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. See what this looks like. Okay, so here's our calculator. We're inside a navigation controller. Hit calculate, it shows it. Go back, hit calculate, it shows it. Now remember, in a navigation controller, every time we segue, what happens? We get a new MVC. So we're getting a new calculator MVC every single time. And in fact, I'm going to prove that to you by going back here to my calculator view controller. And I'm going to have it print every time it creates a new one and every time it leaves the heap. Okay? So let's start with every time it creates a new one. We can use view did load for that. Okay? So here's view did load. Remember, in our view controller life cycles, we always need to call super. Okay, so I'm calling super view did load. I'm going to create a global variable here, which is my calculator count. Start out at zero. That's how many calculator instances are currently existing in the world. So when I do a view did load, which we know only happens once per MVC, I'm going to take my calculator count and increment it by one. And then I'm just going to print out loaded up a new calculator. And I'll tell you what the count is at that time. And that's going to be calculator count. Okay, so every time we create a new MVC, we're just going to get a message. Now, how do we find out when something leaves the heap? Anyone do the homework, the reading homework, and tell me? Special method? What? Nobody? Oh my gosh. Okay, D init. Okay, this special thing, D init, gets called just before you leave the heap. Okay, so in here, I'm just going to say the calculator count minus equals one, because this is leaving the heap. And I'm going to do a print here. I'm going to say calculator left the heap. And now show our count. OK, so now when I run, we're going to see our count of calculators and what happens to it. 
as we keep clicking that calculator button and keep having new MVCs, all right? So here we go, let's calculate, there it is, loaded up a new calculator, count equals one, looks good. We go back, calculator left the heap, count is zero. Go back again, loaded up a new calculator, count is one. Go back, count to zero. So this is proving what I was saying before, that every time we segue, it's creating a new one, and every time we go back, it throws it out. Everybody believe that now? Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our red uh, square root. Okay, let's do our red square root button. I told you I was going to go to calculator brain, brain and add a new public function here called add unary operation. It's going to take a symbol, which is a string, and it's going to take an operation that goes along with it, which takes a double and returns a double. Okay, and adding a unary operation is really easy because all we have to do is add a unary operation to this table right here, okay? So I'm just gonna say operation some symbol, okay? This is the symbol that the person is, wants this under. We're gonna set this equal to the operation. We can't really do that though because we have enums in here, so we need to wrap a operation dot unary operation around this thing, okay? And the associated value is a double takes a double, so that works. And that's it. So I just added a unary operation to my operations table. Okay, now that we have that feature, okay, let's go back to our view controller and use it. In my view did load right here, uh, I'm going to add a unary operation. Oops, add. In my brain, I'm gonna add a unary operation. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have its symbol be the letter Z, but we could make it a nice red dot in a, square root of sign, but faster to type Z. And uh, the function is going to be a closure, okay? And again, I can use the trailing closure notation to do that right here, okay? And as we said in the slides, I'm just gonna set my displays uh, text color equal to UI color red color. And then I'm gonna return the square root of dollar zero. Okay, and as promised, I have an error right here. It says, reference to property display enclosure requires explicit self to make capture semantics explicit. Okay, hopefully that, well, that warning makes perfect sense now. It makes, wants you to be clear that you are going to capture self. It's gonna get a strong pointer to it. So I'm gonna do the fix it right here, which is insert self, fixes that problem. And now we have a unary operation. So let's go to our storyboard and add that somewhere here. We'll replace, how about we replace our old square root with our new z square root and run. All right, so here we are, okay? I'm gonna hit calculate, load it up a new calculator. Let's do 81 red square root. It's working perfectly, okay? It took the square root and it turned the display red. And so let's go back. Uh-oh, we didn't, lose, didn't leave the heap, that's weird. Let's go back again. Oh, now we have two calculators. Uh, What's going on? Three, oh no, we're collecting calculators. Now, these calculators are not very big, they don't have a lot of storage, so probably not gonna kill us, but what if these had an image, right? Or even like a video or something in there, and we we're collecting these things, and they were building up in the heap, never to be freed, okay? That would be a problem, okay? So how can we make it so that it goes back to the way it was, where when we left, it would free up? Well, all we gotta do is go here to this and fix the problem that this self is being held in memory so that a view controller can't be freed when it comes off. Okay, so we can do exactly what we talked about before. We can create, for example, unowned me equals self. How about that one? Okay, don't forget the in right here. Okay, all this stuff has to go before the in. All right, a closure in. Uh, so if we do that, and now we say me, okay, so me right here is unowned, so it's not gonna keep anything in the heap. All right, and we know it's safe here because we're the view controller, we own the brain, so there's no way that we're gonna get thrown out before the brain. So let's run again. So here is calculate, 81 square root. Okay, red is still working. Back, left the heap. Okay, working good, see that? All right, now another way we could have done it here instead of unowned is we could have said weak, weak self equals self. Okay, so this is a weak variable right here. It's a, going to be an optional. In fact, if I look at it, see, it's an 
optional view controller. You see that? Optional view controller. So right here it's complaining. You can't send display to, oops, this, this was weak self. It would be complaining. You can't send display to weak self because it's an optional. See? And it's asking, do you want to put exclamation point? But I'm going to be more conservative and just put a question mark right here, just in case this ever did get to be nil. I just want this line of code not to happen. Okay? So let's see if that fixes our problem. All right, calculate, back, calculate, back, calculate, and square root, still turning it red. Okay, now you're probably going to be using functions, I would imagine, in your assignment three, and closures two, probably. I'm not going to require that you not have memory loops. In other words, you're allowed to have these memory cycles in your assignment three. Uh, but if you want to try and fix it in your assignment three, you're welcome to, okay? I never ask you to do anything in your assignment that I didn't teach you in class before I gave you the assignment, so this is after I gave you the assignment, so it's totally optional uh, if you want to fix it. Uh, but otherwise, it's likely you probably will have a memory cycle in your assignment three. It's, it's possible you won't, but likely you would if you don't do this. Okay? Any questions about that? All right, back to our slides.